no, no. We started yesterday. Okay. We haven't slept. So we've worked through the night because the plane came in, as you know, yesterday with all of the crates that the dogs were traveling today. So then when they got to us, we had to put them all together and label them all up with the documents, etc. So that takes a long time. That's a hard job because they're all a bit higgledy-piggledy, different sizes, you have to sort them out. So we've had a team working through the night doing that. Um, we finished about four this morning. Um, and then it was time to start giving the dogs their medication and, and getting the dogs into the crates. So since about 4.30 this morning, we've been loading dogs in crates ready to come here. All right, can you give us an overview of the refugee project? Um, where did it come from? This is the second year. Just remind us. It is. This is the second flight that we've done. Um, and we're very grateful to Mr. Maloney and MJ here for this one. Um, we didn't know if we'd ever do a second, um, but we have out of necessity really because of the unfortunate situation with so many dogs in Barbados um, to, for me it, it's, it's kind of tinged with sadness that we have to do this because I would very much like it that, that we didn't have to do this I wish that there weren't so many dogs and cats abandoned and in need of our help in Barbados and I will be the happiest person ever when we don't have to do this um, but we do and it gives these dogs a chance of a new life and a, a great life with families and homes who will love them and care for them. And it also means that we can help all of the others because we have a real long waiting list already. So we're not going to be empty for long. People are already waiting to bring their dogs to us. So we don't do this just for fun or to please people in Canada who want our dogs. We do this because we absolutely have to because we're stuck. We have been so pushed for the last few months with so many dogs and having to have too many dogs together which is dangerous they could fight um, and that is so stressful for us because obviously we do this because we care about the dogs we don't want to put them in a position where they're in danger and we find ourselves almost doing that because we don't have space so that's why we have to do this because we have nowhere else to go there's just not enough homes I remember you said at the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of people were abandoning their dogs and so on. Mm -hmm. Is that still the current state of play? What was it like? It is, is really. Yeah, I mean, people do still seem to abandon their dogs and we would really like that to change. But we would like that there weren't all these dogs to abandon. We want people to think much more carefully about whether they should be having a dog or not. Um, and if you're going to have a dog, how are you going to look after it? And to, to not let it have puppies, because if you might want one dog, but you don't necessarily want eight. So, you know, it's, we need people to just think a little bit more about it. We can help. This is what we want to do. We want to help people. Spay and neuter is the most important thing we can do in Barbados. If anybody wants to know more about it, they should definitely call us anytime. We will help, we will advise, we will organize um, the spay and neuter of your pets, cats, dogs whatever we, we can help you because that is the solution we need to help people with education which we continue to do all of the time so those two things together the spay and neuter the education and the facilitation of things that people need to keep their dogs because lots of people can perhaps manage to feed their dogs but they haven't necessarily you know can't afford the medication or the other things that go with it well we can help rather than leave your dog to suffer we, we can help but really we would like people first and foremost to think about whether they are in a position to have a dog.